Hello everyone, I am Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on the course Operating Systems. In this lecture, let us learn about the last uh, CPA scheduling algorithm as per our um, video lecture series. Uh, so, we will be learning about priority uh, pre to CPU scheduling algorithm. You can recollect we already learned about priority CPU scheduling algorithm where we have considered about priority as non preemptive right i'll just quickly revise uh, how we have done it in non preemptive non preemptive is nothing but once a process has been assigned to a cpu then until and unless it completes its execution it will not release the cpu right so in priority what happens the process which is having the highest priority that will be given the chance to be executed I'll just quickly tell you what are all the other CPU scheduling algorithms we have already learned in our last videos. We learned about FCFS, SJF, which are non preemptive. We also learned about um, round robin and SRTF, uh, which are preemptive. I hope you all are clear with those videos. So, today we will learn in detail about this priority preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm. So, the same logic what we have applied there will be applied here. In this, what happens for each process, a priority will be assigned. Uh, 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 the priority in the in the sense of giving a number will be assigned to each prior each process. The lower the value, the higher the priority is. It's like a ranking. Now, here how a, a non preemptive priority will work is now present if you are working any if you if the CP is executing any process. Okay. Now its priority let us consider two. Now, while CPU is executing this process, now at some particular time, another process that is considered P2 has arrived, then that its priority will be compared with the presently working process priority. Now, if the priority of this process is high, that means as per the ranking, if the rank is 1, then what the CPU will do? It will stop executing this process, right? And the CPU will be assigned to this process. So, that's why it is called as preemptive. In the earlier uh, priority algorithm, what we have learned, once a CPU is assigned to P1 and, and until and unless it completed execution it will not release this cpu isn't it or not but in this case of uh, preemptive what happens while executing a process if a new process come that is what is highlighted here if a new process arise then uh, the current process uh, priority if it is less than the uh, newly arrived process then the currently running process will be preempted preempted is nothing but forcibly it will be stopped and it will be added to the ready queue right so i hope you all are clear with this ex uh, how theoretically it is doing now let us take some problems and we'll solve the uh, problem we'll calculate what is the waiting time and turnaround time using the priority preemptive scheduling algorithm right so let us consider five process always remember whenever you are going to use the priority you need to provide the priority of each process and then the amount of cpu time required and then the arrival time also understand here two process can have same priority also it is okay there is no issue in that i hope you are clear up, up to now now let us start using priority cpu scheduling algorithm i'll be making on timer each second why we are maintaining timer because at each second we need to check the arrival time here whether any new process is coming or not if it is coming we need to add that to our ready queue as of now nothing is there in the ready queue now let us start at timer zero you can see we have got two process that are p1 and p2 now p1 and p2 both will be uh, added to the ready queue now which process will be given a chance the process which is having the highest priority will be given the chance as per our uh, terminology i already told you lower the value highest the priority so p1 will be given a chance because p1 you can see the priority is one and p2 the priority is two so the p1 is having the highest priority so p1 will be given a chance to be executed so that will be added to the ready queue so that is how which is having the highest priority p1 is having the highest priority so p1 will be executed now p1 requires four seconds we already executed one second now now timer is at 1 we need to check at 1 second anything is arriving or not that is what the use of this timer I hope you all are understanding right so p1 is executed for one second no process is arriving so continue with another second and at two seconds you check any process is arriving in the arrival time no process is arrived and then p 
always remember p1 requires 4 seconds okay and then one more second it will execute at 3 seconds any process is arriving no process is arriving so we will execute 4 seconds okay all 4 seconds are done so at time 4 p1 has come finished its uh, process and so processor is now assigned to p2 why because you can see no other process is there here only process that is left is p2 that will be added to the queue or that will be added in the gantt chart that means now p2 will be assigned to the cpu that is what so p1 will come has completed its execution and that is that has been turned into red and now p2 has got the chance now p2 has executed for one second right p2 requires three seconds out of which one second is executed we are at the timer five you see in the arrival time any you know, any process is arriving at the fifth second no process is arriving so we need to we can continue with p2 so p2 if you see we are at the sixth second two process two seconds are executed one second is required still and you can see at sixth second we have got a process which is p3 now p3 will be added to the ready queue now whenever a new process arrives what is the uh, thing we need to check here presently executing process priority that is p2's priority we need to check which is 2 and the new process p3 has arrived that means p3 priority we need to check got it now what is the which one is having the highest priority of these two priority p2 is having or p3 is having p3 is having the highest priority isn't it or not why because the smaller the value the larger the priority so p3 is having the highest priority so that will be given a chance and p2 will be forcefully preempted and it will be added to the ready queue so that's why p2 has been added and p3 has been sent to the gantt chart now p3 requires seven seconds you can see and observe here p2 has not completed its execution still it requires one second but because of the priority constraint here we have transfer the cpu to the p3 process now p3 has ex required seven seconds out of which one second is executed which is sixth second mm, uh, um, so seventh second we need to check any new process has been arrived or not no new process has been arrived one second executed and one more second executed at eighth second any process is arriving no process is arriving one second we will execute you can observe here and keep on decrementing the value so that we can have a track of that one ninth second anything is arriving nothing tenth nothing eleventh second if you see we got a new process which is eleventh second which is our p4 process that has to be added to the ready queue already we have p2 and p4 has arrived now whenever a new process arrives what is the thing we need to do we need to check the priority of p4 that is the new process and priority of p3 now what we need to do you can understand which process is having uh, highest priority p3 is having one and p4 is having three so p3 is having the highest priority so we can continue with our p3 so no need to shift our process right no need to shift our cpu to a new process we can continue with p3 right so that is what it is told because p3 is having the highest priority so we can continue with our p3 now one more second uh 12th second you can see at 12th second we got a new process again that has to be added to the ready queue which is p5 now p5 priority we need to take and p3 is the present executing process its priority we need to check okay which is having the highest priority p3 is obviously p3 is having the highest priority so we can continue with the p3 right because p3 rank is one we can continue with the p3 now p3 requires one more second still so we can continue with that one at 13 second pt p3 has completed its execution that is the end of this so after this that 12th second we don't have any other process so let us not keep track of that one uh, all process have arrived into the ready queue now between p4 p p2 p4 p5 which process we need to select now now whenever we have more than one process in the ready queue obviously we need to go with the priority now you can see p2 priority is 2 p4 priority is 3 and p5 priority is 2 among these two which process this among these the three these two are having the equal priority right so these two are having the least uh, highest priority now between these two which has to be selected which has come first into the ready queue that has to be selected are you understanding 
right so whenever two processes are having the same priority that are already available in the ready queue then the process that has arrived first into the ready queue has to be given a chance that means in our case p2 has come first this is first right so that has to be a given a chance and p2 requires how many seconds only one second reminding so p2 will be given and it has finished its execution now we have p4 and p5 uh, among these two we got p5 is having the highest priority so p5 will be given a chance and p5 requires two seconds so two seconds it will execute and then finally we have p4 which requires four seconds so we will be executing that one so by 20 seconds we will we have completed all the process execution right now, with this knowledge, what we will see now, we will just calculate the start time and the, um, uh, let us calculate the waiting time and the turnaround time. You already all, uh, I think you are all aware as of now, what is the formula for the waiting time, start time minus arrival time plus waiting time for the next, uh, waiting time for the next um, chance, right, next slot. Now, let us consider for P1, you can see what is the start time, it is 0, and what is the arrival time, it is 0, and P1, anywhere it is waiting, nowhere if it is waiting, if it is waiting, that also we need to consider. So, 0 minus 0, which is 0. Now, P2, you can see start time is 4, and the arrival time is 0, and anywhere it is waiting, yes, it is waiting, that means from this slot to this, uh, sorry, Sorry, from this slot to this slot, P2 is waiting. What is that? That is total of 57. Uh, so, 4 minus 0 plus, what is that slot? It is a total of 11. Right? Now, what is P3? P3, you can see the start time is 6 and then... Uh, Arrival time is uh, 6, 6 minus 6 is 0 and nowhere it is waiting. Similarly, you can see here P4 uh, is having a waiting time of 5 and P5 is having a waiting time of 2 and the average waiting time here we got is 3.6. Now, let us see how turnaround time is calculated. Turnaround time is nothing but completion time minus arrival time. P1 uh, completion time is 4 minus 0. So, 4 minus 0 right so p2 completion time is p2 you can see you should not consider this 6 you can see p2 has completed its execution is 14 so 14 minus 0 is 14 p3 has completed its execution is 13 minus arrival time is 6 so 13 minus 6 is 7 similarly p4 and p5 now if you calculate the average we got 7.6 Right, i hope you all are clear with this calculations of waiting time and turnaround time uh, uh, while uh, using this priority preemptive scheduling algorithm right now the observation here is uh, it suffers from starvation why we are considering uh, it is an uh, it is a problem here is if a process a cpu is executing one process and if a highest priority process comes then cpu will be going there by suspending this execution that means it has to wait here and again another which comes which is having the highest priority than p1 and cpu which is here that means this process p1 has to keep on waiting for its chance because of its lowest priority which is called as starvation and that problem can be solved by using aging aging is the solution what is the meaning of aging is after a certain period of time if some process are waiting in our queue now they are not getting a chance because of their uh, lowest priority let us consider the rank is 4 here and the rank is 5 and they are not getting a chance to be executed because of this their highest priority in that case after a certain period of time okay what we can do let us consider 15 minutes of time if you consider after that the priority will be changed to the next lower level so earlier it was 4 it has been changed to 3 earlier it was 5 it has to be changed to 4 so because of that uh, change in the priority that means we are making them aging that is called as aging because of that they may get a chance to be executed again after 15 minutes of time the priority will be changed to 2 and this will be changed to 3 okay and this will so that is what called as aging is a solution where the priority of a process can be increased right so i hope you all are clear with this concept of how preem to uh, scheduling algorithm preem to priority scheduling algorithm is working now this is the assignment for you you can make a note of this one um, try to calculate the average uh, turnaround time and uh, average waiting time uh, uh, first you need to draw the gantt chart and keep a track of the timer and keep a track of the uh, ridicules
right i hope you all are clear with this concept that has all made in the next lecture until then thank you all of you